Welcome to the AMC Newsroom. This is Carl Ford talking to you with Stephen Westy from, uh, from IPASS. Uh, many of us who were in the VoIP space for quite some time know IPASS from our old days of clearinghouse functions and trying to provide those services. Stephen, first of all, welcome. Thank you. Good, Good to, to be meet here. you. Um, now, tell me about IPASS today. What's, what's the difference between from when I knew it and what it does today? Um, depending on when you knew us, I guess it was probably a little, little while ago. Um, we started off when a company was founded, you know, aggregating networks around the world. They happened to be you know, dial networks at that point. Um, it was a big complexity problem, you know, rather than going out and uh, you know, signing agreements with 50, 60 different ISPs, then you could just sign one, one agreement with us and we'd give you access around the world. And we did that, it was, it was a great business for us. And then obviously technology evolved and you know, Wi-Fi came on the scene. So we have uh, an aggregated footprint of Wi-Fi hotspots around the world, about 140,000 or something of that nature. Um, we also have 3G services, so you know the access mechanisms have evolved and changed over the over the over the time, um, but we still provide those network services um, as one part of our business. The other part of the business is is uh, related to that, which is really managing the mobility problem. So whether you use our network or not, how do you get connected? And so we have a you know, a um, open mobile platform which allows us to you know, work with any network, whether you're connecting from home, whether you're connecting over somebody else's 3G or Wi-Fi network, or you're in the office on your campus LAN and providing the, the, the tool sets for the administrators to define policies on how you connect, under what circumstances, what you know, security policies need to be uh, enforced, what cost policies need to be enforced. And so we provide that to the IT administrators and have a user experience that just makes it easy for the users to get connected wherever they are. So uh, in talking to a lot of the, um, uh, the companies here who do policy control and are connected up to the HSS, they're, they're kind of at the level of what the carrier is looking for, but you're really more focused in on what the enterprise is looking for, right? Yeah, we're, we're an enterprise play. You know, we do things like directory integration. We support, you know, work with VPNs and you know, endpoint security vendors. And we're really there to manage that connection experience. And there are maybe certain conditions that need to be met before somebody can connect, like, yeah, is AV running? And you know, right. or you, when you see connect, you know, auto launch the VPN, you know, things of that nature. So we're really tied into the, you know, the enterprise infrastructure around identity, around security policies, and also have our own policies that can be created around things like cost. Right? So you know, always connect me to a free Wi-Fi hotspot if it's available, or if I'm at home on a corporate LAN, connect me to there. But you know, if, I'm, uh, if I'm overseas and I have a 3G contract you know, domestically here in the US, then you know, don't, don't, uh, don't let me connect um, and incur all those roaming charges. So we have a policy sort of framework, if you like, that enables us to use what you have, you know, okay. um, but also to overlay additional policies that really are about managing that connection. And it's really managing that connection experience is kind of what iPods is all about. Okay, and and you've got a software as a service strategy now as well. Yeah, we have uh, we have uh, you know a cloud if you like. You know, we've had it you know, back in the days when you knew us. Um, we had this infrastructure um, that we built out over the years. We have seven data centers around the world. You know, we have three and a half thousand customers um, that connect in through that cloud. Um, and so we have the ability to uh, create and administer and lifecycle manage you know, the services. Um, and then we have a, a piece of software that sits on the device, um, the laptop or the, or the handheld. This is really where the policies are invoked and enforced and also information provided back to a centralized portal that the administrator can go and, and use really as a business intelligence tool more than anything else. Okay, and we're here at CTIA. So there, were there any announcements at CTIA? Um, we announced uh, our support for the Gobi chipset, um, the Qualcomm Gobi chipset, which uh, is important for us and for our customers, we think, because of the fragmentation that's out there on the device layer. So you know, where really iPass comes into play is where there's fragmentation um, and complexity uh, that results from that. And so that is either the device layer. Uh, we've seen you know, lots of announcements over the last you know, year or so around Android and you know, different OSs. And we've seen you know, a whole series of devices being announced here. And the, the Gobi chipset is, is another great way, great way for people to get connected. And so being able to work you know, with, that, um, with that technology and allow you know, enterprises to get connected using their, their um, Gobi device, um, but be able to you know, mix and match the carriers underneath, not be tied to a particular carrier, um, and be able to do that sort of independent of the device, if you like, and independent of the network is, is important um, for our customers to get connected when they want to and, you know, reduce some of that complexity of how they manage those devices. Excellent. Cool. Stephen, thank you so much. Very good. Thank you. Good job.